Welcome back. Now at this point you guys should have some microgreens grown. Now we can take these and use these in our soups and salads and if you guys are tempted to taste it I'm going to show you real quick how you can taste a couple of them and after that we're going to take them and transplant them into our larger off-grid grow box so that you can grow them even larger. So this is where we get into the true hydroponics whereas this was just grown in soil and this was just a self-watering container. So hopefully you guys saw how easy that was to grow. You set it up and if you were like me, you probably only filled that up once or twice and didn't have to water it or anything. So very simple to grow. Now, if you want to try some of these, all you got to do is get a little scissors and don't trim too close down to the soil because if there's any bacteria in that, mold, mildew, it'll be inside the soil. So you want to let these grow tall enough, about like this, probably about two to three inches. So these are about two inches tall. And you want to trim up about halfway up. Don't trim too close, okay? And I'll get just a couple of these off of here. So we can show you. You just want to try it. Now you want to be careful with some if you get mustard or radishes they tend to be a little spicy so if you don't like spicy food you might not want to do too much but if you want to taste this if you want to be really careful i just get a little bit of water and i just pour a little bit of vinegar tiny bit of vinegar into it and just drop them right in and let those sit there for a couple of minutes and then after that i just have one other container with just plain water to pick them up and toss them over there and just kind of rinse them off. The vinegar will kind of kill any kind of bacteria that's on there. Then once it's rinsed then you get the vinegar back off so you don't have that tart kind of flavor. You just try them and I've had these before. These are wasabi flavored ones. Mmm, really spicy. Those are good. So you can try those, sit that to the side. So microgreens can be eaten just like this. Use them to sprinkle them on top of your foods. It's decorative and packed with flavor and healthy for you. All right, now let's plant some of these into your container so you can grow them to bigger plants. I'll move this to the side for a second explain we've got this got a little bit of soil we'll bring you in for close-up but you should have a container that looks something like this and basically it's just a reservoir it's just a container with a lid and if your teacher drilled the holes in it you probably have four holes in it like that now to prep this i've already got two gallons of water here i just poured in here and you're going to want just a smidge more than two gallons what you want to do is not fill it all the way to the top come about half an inch from the top about like that we'll bring you in there for a close-up you want it up high enough so that once you get your plant put in here basically you guys are going to be using this I think you've got net cups you want that water level to be able to come up here where your plants roots are going to be hanging down Now your teacher should have provided all of you with nutrients and you're going to have to give it with them to see how much to put into two gallons of water. This holds just a little over two gallons of water so however much you need for that make sure you ask your teacher and go ahead and add that stir it up and let it sit for a little while. Then we'll get ready to plant them out. Okay now at this point after you get the nutrients in the water if you're going to be using an air pump to aerate the water you want to go ahead and do that now so you guys should have gotten an air pump like the ones they use on an aquarium for your fish some tubing with a check valve and an air stone and it may not look exactly like this and your pump might look a little different but they all work about the same so pretty much what you want to do is get your tubing and if your check valve is not already in your tubing you're going to want a small piece on each end of your tube on each end of your check valve 
and your check valve is going to have an arrow or it'll say in and out you want to make sure that out is going towards your air stone or into your reservoir and what the check valve does it only works in one direction so you want out going that way the air is going out and into here and then that way if any kind of water gets built up inside this tubing it doesn't flow back into your pump and cause an electrical failure so your check valve is very important it only works one way so if you get this all hooked up and you plug it in and your thing's not bubbling you might want to check that you have your check valve installed the right way so out goes out towards your grow box so what you want to do is we're going to take one end of the tube and you should have a smaller hole instead of these there should be a smaller hole somewhere to accommodate your tubing we're just going to slide that in through there take your air stone push that on and just have it so that it dips down into the water just like that take the other one You've got your check valve on it right going out towards your grow box and attach that to your outlet on your pump it's that simple now this helps keep the roots aerated I just have your pump situated and just plug it in see if it's working You hear it humming and just check it see it bubbling away all right now let's go ahead and plan it out now in my videos if you watch any of my videos I use pool noodles but I think that your teacher ordered you net cups which they use in traditional hydroponics and cloning collars which I use the pool noodle to replace both of those um, but I happen to have one of these laying around, so I'm going to plant this one out for you. I'll do the other three the way I usually do, but I want to show you guys how you're going to be doing it. So go ahead and set your net cup aside for a second. And if you notice a cloning collar, see if we can focus, has a small hole in the middle. I don't know if you can see that hole right in the middle there okay and that's where your plant's gonna go because once this gets squeezed if you if you squeeze your plant too tight it'll die so you want to go and make sure you get in that little space right there and if yours doesn't have a tiny space there ask your parents or you might want to cut that a little bit make that a little bit bigger and when I use the pool noodles this shows it a little bit more so I cut one piece, there's a wedge of a pool noodle. And I cut a wedge out and I put it in here, it's not perfect. So when I close it up, can you see there's a little hole where light gets through. And that's where I put my plants so that they don't get squashed when I put them in there. So let's go ahead and get a couple of these to bring you in here for a close up. What you wanna do is check this out. Now, yours may have grown. This is a little uneven. You can tell the ones on the edge that are getting a little more water and have a little bit more air to breathe. There's more space for them. They grew a little bigger, and these ones in the middle are a little smaller. You want to get these big ones, the ones that look a little bit more mature. And you just take them and just gently pull at them. All right? See that? So what you're gonna have is your plant. And you want it long enough so when you put it in your cloning collar, it'll hang down and the roots are down below. Okay? So if they're not that big yet, this is uh, about three quarters of an inch, you don't wanna go ahead and harvest them yet. So when they're about that size. And what we're gonna do is put about three to five plants inside of each one of these. So we'll just go through and 
You can pull up a couple at a time if you want. Okay, I think about three there. And see there's a little bit of soil. Don't worry about that. This is non-circulating. There's no pumps or aeration in that to mess up. But if you get a little too much, you can have a little thing of water sitting to the side. And just kind of dip it in there. And get most of it off. Okay, you don't have to worry about getting it all off. Put all of them that you got together. So I've got about four plants there. And we'll come in for a close up. What we do is just open up your cloning collar. See there's a little space. There's a slit on there to open it up. Slide those guys right in there. To where they go right in that center hole. Okay. And then on the other side you've got your roots hanging down. And that's all there is to it. Now don't get rid of these, we're going to plant all of these out, but you want to keep these around growing just like they are for a little while, okay? I'm going to explain that in a second. But then you take this, and you get your neck cup, and just set it down in there. And if the roots are touching the bottom there, that's a good size, you've got, you know, you've got a good size for it. So, should look something like that. We've got the plant sitting up on top, and your roots down in the bottom and then it's as simple as dropping it in there all done so I'm gonna plant out three more so you can see all right one more thing when I put these in I usually put them in and then I pull them back out and I make sure that it's wet and make sure that it's touching the nutrient solution because if the roots aren't touching the nutrient solution these little guys will die in a day or two so you want to go ahead and make sure that your roots are touching the nutrient solution and just like this the ones that you all put in there if you pick it up in the bottom of that cup where you see the nutrient I mean the roots so it's like this one you all use the cup if you pick it back up, the bottom of the cup should be wet like that, dripping, and your roots should be touching the nutrient solution, okay? And that's it. Now, this is non-circulating. All you have to do is set this someplace where you get sunlight, but you don't want to set it in the direct sun um, all during the afternoon. If you come out here and you feel this is warm, then it's a little um, uh, too hot for your plants. And you want to go ahead and make sure it gets plenty of morning light and afternoon shade if you can. And it depends on where you grow. You guys are up north. It's a little bit different, but you might have to play around with it. But if you just have this inside, put it by a sunny window. Um, if you've got some bright lights that you can put near it during the day, that helps. And basically, you don't have to water or anything. Just let these guys go. And in a few weeks, they're going to be... A lot bigger and you can actually harvest off of them and, and try some now there's different flavors uh, these are mustard greens you're probably not gonna you know like them by, on their own um, but if you cut them up put them in a sandwich or salad they add a little bit of spiciness whatever your teacher has gotten you there's a whole myriad of different flavors and you're just gonna have to try different ones and see what you like alrighty so we're gonna let that go for a couple weeks and see what they look like so in anywhere from two to four weeks, you'll have full grown plants that you can harvest off of. And I hope you guys have seen how easy it is to grow your own microgreens and take some of those plants, grow them into baby greens or big leafy greens. So all kinds of stuff you can do. If you guys have any questions, make sure you ask your teachers and they'll get in contact with me and we'll work it out. Alrighty, you guys keep on growing. We'll catch you later.